You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health. There is Hope, the podcast. I'm your host, Janice Short, and today I am so excited to be recording this four-part series with Gail Ginsler. Gail is a pro-aging fitness enthusiast with the goal of changing the narrative about aging through fitness and embracing a healthy lifestyle. And we're doing a four-part series on exactly that, living your best life at any decade. Gail, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be sitting and chatting with you and recording this for your community to hear. In this four part series, in part one, we're gonna be talking about creating a new business in your midlife. And by the way, I did the same thing. And it was, I can't even tell you, it gave me like a purpose and, and I, got, I felt all this new passion pumping through me. And I know that our, our, we're always being told as you, you age, you slow down but I don't feel like that's necessarily true. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. At least for me. And and I do understand. I am cognizant of the fact that when people do reach a certain stage in midlife, particularly 60 and beyond, that they're very happy to slow down. They're happy to retire. They're happy to chill out a little bit. I'm just not one of those people. Um, I took, as usual, I took the opposite approach. And I have used this time in my life to reinvent myself and to live out some goals and dreams and visions that I've had laying dormant for a long time. And I'm able to do that now. Let's talk about like what that looks like in midlife, like people who are um, like retiring and they're like, I don't want to just sit home and garden. I, I mean, if you want to go for it, you earned it. But a lot of people like now I'm free to do what I really am passionate about doing. So I'm actually not free to do anything because Jana, I still have my full-time job. So I've been in the automotive industry for 34 years. I've been at my current company for 22 years. I still really enjoy my job. I add a lot of value to the dealership I work for. I am blessed. I have a great team. I have great coworkers. I have a fantastic boss. And the legacy of the greatest mentor of my life, who was the owner of the dealership, he passed last year. He should rest in peace. But the legacy lives on. And I'm still very fulfilled by that. With that being said, I did have a vision in 2008 of making my exit strategy from the automotive industry into something that really is my passion, which is fitness and a healthy lifestyle. And I did actually get the opportunity to own a boxing gym at the time, which was incredible, huge risk, uh, a lot of pain. And unfortunately the stars were not aligned for me at that time. Uh, the universe said, oh, we're going to have a recession right now. So the recession of 2008, 2009, I could not hang on. But it was my first shot at living out a vision. And after that, I really had to lay back and just sit with doing my regular job. Uh, My daughter was still growing up. She's now 25 and a wonderful, fully functioning adult who I'm very proud of. Um, So this is my time. And I thought, you know, this is the perfect time for me to now execute my vision. And it started two years ago when I was 58. I don't know how it is in California where you are, but here in South Florida, there are these over 55 communities where people are meant to go when they do want to slow down and retire and they want to be surrounded by people their own contemporary. And Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the commercials that they were showing were people who were taking leisurely strolls or playing golf or maybe some doubles tennis. And I looked at that and I said, wait, 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 where are the people like me? I am still in beast mode, boxing at the gym all the time, doing crazy hit classes, running at full speed. Where are those people? And they were not there. And when I dug a little deeper and unpacked that a little bit more, then I started recognizing that all the other advertisements depicted people in midlife um, as sick and needing medication and always being a, a grandmother, but not a modern grandmother 
the grandmother that I remember is my grandmother and not me at all. And I felt very left out. And I said, there has to be more to this. And that's where the idea started germinating about creating this business. And at the time, I had no clue where this journey was going to take me. I knew it would, would not be boring. I knew it was going to be exciting. I knew that I was going to get to utilize some inherent competencies that I had that I couldn't utilize in my regular full-time career. And I have to say two years later, it's everything I had hoped it would be and more. And I'm excited for what the future holds. So I never had that, you know, I just never stopped really. I didn't retire and say what's next. I just never stopped, which is typical. I love it. I feel the same way. I feel like at a certain point in your life, you're just waiting. Time passes and you're waiting, you know, till it stops passing. And I choose to like, have a different approach. I want to live and thrive until that day comes in every moment, no matter where I'm at. And when we get into that mindset, that day comes sooner because that's what our brain thinks we're preparing for. Right. And so keeping yourself active and following something that you were super passionate about, you have that aha moment and you're like, I, I know there's more people like me and we're going to get more into that because she has like some amazing facts and like um, what is really happening in the, in the marketing and commercial space. And, um, but we have a whole episode on that. So I hope you guys listen to all four episodes and learn some amazing things because this isn't just for people in midlife. I want you younger people to understand that if you have a dream and like you and I, we were busy raising our kids. We were busy, like paying the bills and we weren't able to really jump into it. And then later in life, something magical happens. Our kids grow up, they become beautiful adults taking care of themselves. And we get a little more of our time back. And maybe those bills are, have, you know, dwindled down a bit. We've got more control over that. And we have an opportunity to start really doing and, and creating what we have envisioned or want to do. And so you can start taking little steps for that now and learn some of those things from Gal. And also, it's very important to me that younger generations don't fear the years. I don't want people in their 20s and their 30s to go, oh, 60? Like, it's a terrible thing. First of all, trite though it sounds, it's obviously a gift to live out a long life. And I'm very blessed. My grandparents lived till 97 and 94, and my parents till 92 and 90. So like I said to my daughter, Lauren, I think I'm going to be around for a long time unless the universe has some odd plan. Uh, but there is no reason to not embrace aging with everything that it truly is. And it is midlife is an amazing time. It's, I mean, I can, I can keep going about what midlife really means to me, but the ability to be able to execute my vision, to have the confidence. I mean, I've always been a very confident woman, always. But I'm even more confident now in my capabilities and the value that I can add and the purpose that I can add and also the legacy that I want to leave, which is very important to me. I want to leave an indelible mark. I want future generations to remember me and say, right, that was the woman that broke down the barriers of institutional ageism. That was the woman who was the face of that brand when they weren't doing that at the very beginning. And it's not easy, Jenna, being a pioneer. Sometimes you're a little too early in these spaces. It's not easy, but in true Gail Gensler fashion, I don't care. <laughs> so what? I don't care. So like I say 60, so what? I really don't care. I'm going to just do me, be me, for me, because I know it's the right thing to do. And it makes me feel wonderful. I remember when I turned 60, I... I tell people all the time, fifties was my best decade ever. Who'd have thought I couldn't wait to see what my sixties was going to be like. And here I am moving into my next year of my sixties. And I'm like, it's not been disappointing. It's been amazing. I have the freedom to do so many things now. And I think that that is empowering. It's also the emotional freedom the intellectual freedom. It's not just a time freedom, although that's important. But uh, listen, if, you, if something's important enough, you're gonna make the time, 
right? We all know that. If it's important to you to work out and the only time that you have to do it, like me at six o'clock in the morning, I'm up at 4.30. I'm going to make the time to do it because it's extremely important as a priority. But to also have the freedom of not really caring what anybody else thinks, which is something that unfortunately, I know I thought about in my 20s, right? You're always comparing yourself to somebody and wondering if you measure up. And of course, social media today, I feel terrible for the younger women today because the standards are so ludicrous and not realistic and not real, actually, um, that, you know, it, it can cause a lot of insecurities. And in midlife, in, when I got into my the decade of my 50s, I was like, who cares? This is my journey. This is my life. I'm going to do what I want to do to make me feel fulfilled and to make me feel like I'm giving back to my community and leaving that legacy that's so important to me. So whether you're coming at it from my perspective of that you just never stopped, or I, I listen to a lot of women who their life has changed. Maybe they're empty nesters, perhaps they're divorced and they are by themselves for the first time and they are starting that new journey. Don't let any of that get in your head. Do not get in your own head with this. You can do anything you want to do and you deserve it and you have the right to do it. And that's the most important thing to remember. You deserve it and you have the right. And there's no reason you shouldn't pursue your dreams. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. It just has to make sense to you. And as long as you go out there in the universe with great intentions, kindness, and, and really thinking about all the great things you can leave behind, there's, there's so much room for success for all of us. All of us can leave a legacy. Well, I know when I first met you and you um, told me a little bit about your passion and your brand and who you were, I was really not only moved, but I was like, you know, she's right. Why does this happen? So I want, I want to explain a little bit about how amazing Gail is, and uh, I'm going to have her actually do it, and about what her brand is and what that means to her. And when she pointed it out to me, I was like, you know, you're absolutely right. They are still trying to target to women our age, by the way, who carries most of the money <laughs> around, who has most, of the, like, we have a very big voice. You guys may not think you do, but you have a very powerful voice. And I'm trying to buy a pair of jeans or a gym suit or, and I'm seeing the 20 year olds, right? And they, they have been embracing different body sizes, which I love that we've moved into that because we want you to love your, your body at any size, at any age. And I noticed there's never someone in their fifties or above wearing their clothes. And I'm smart. I know that, yes, I would love to look like that 20 year old again, but I'm not. I want to know what it looks like on someone my age and they're missing that market. And it just blows me away because the women I meet at our age now, they look like us. They are phenomenal. Like they've taken very healthy care of themselves. They're doing amazing. So tell us why that, that very typical mess or very specific message is so important for you. In looking at these advertisements, which I referred to earlier, I thought that there's definitely something very archaic about that. It really pigeonholes us into a very specific corner. And of course, you know, from a woman's perspective, right? We know this already. Men, when they have gray hair, they're distinguished. Men, when they have some lines, you know, they're sophisticated. Uh, women, on the other hand, uh, on one side, we're ridiculed for trying to look too young. And on the other side, then we're also admonished for, well, you have this and you have lines and you have gray hair and you have that. So, you know, it's sort of a no-win situation, right? So my goal is to make it more realistic. And it's, it, as, you, as you said, it's lovely to see high fashion items on women. I call them, you know, so they're genetically blessed. They're 10 feet tall. Their legs are up to here on me. That's great, right? But that doesn't inspire me, Jenna. That doesn't say that outfit's going to look great on me. And, and I get it. But uh, I mean, on, on one level, I get it from the marketer's perspective, but they're missing the whole mark and the statistics are really overwhelming. And, and we'll go into that um, in another segment. But my goal really is to break down institutional ageism. I want to be that woman in that ad. 
and and fitness is my niche it's my space and that's really for me that speaks the loudest and i know there's so many other women my contemporary who work out and whatever that looks like through your lens it doesn't have to be boxing like i do crazy hit classes like i do you know going to every gym in miami as part of the carbon 38 team 38 ambassador program i'm all over the place i just got back from one this morning um great workout by the way um it doesn't have to look like that what whatever it looks like to you maybe you're you play tennis or maybe you do play golf or whatever it is, but don't you want to see that on somebody, your contemporaries, you can say, wow, if that looks good on Gail, I could see myself in that outfit. And it's great, you know, that we do live in an age of inclusivity, right? There, as you, as you mentioned, there's body inclusivity, size inclusivity, and that's wonderful. There's color inclusivity, there's race inclusivity, there's everything except age. And if I do ever see somebody in our contemporary modeling something in the fitness space, it's very unrealistic. Uh, you know, there's one woman who for two seconds was on a brand's uh, Instagram feed uh, modeling the clothes. She's 10 foot tall. I don't think she's ever lifted a weight in her life. And quite frankly, she looked, she didn't look authentic. And I, I'm looking for authenticity at this point. I, I don't buy into the unrealistic things that I see on social media because I know that most of that is not an accurate depiction of what people look like. And I think it's only fair that we are accurately depicted. And again, not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not 10 feet tall. I'm not perfect. But I think that I'm very relatable. I'm just an everyday woman doing extraordinary things that anybody can accomplish if they put their mind to it. I don't have, other than maybe the fact that I really get at it in the gym, right? So I would say that's my claim to fame. Other than that, I'm no more extraordinary than anybody else. I just have tremendous drive, tremendous discipline. I really enjoy pursuing my goals and executing my visions. And this is this is the ultimate challenge. This is it. If I can do this and pave the way for future generations, what a tremendous legacy I've left. I love it. This is why I fell in love with this woman. She's so incredible. So you guys are listening right now to her four part series, living your best life at any decade. And I love the passion behind it, but I want you guys to tune into the next episode where Gail is going to talk about why brand marketing should include 50 plus, which is where you're going to hear so much incredible stuff. You're going to be shocked. I know I was yet. I see it all the time. So I don't know why I was so shocked. So I want you guys to check out episode two. It's a four part series and it's, some of it's fun. Some of it's very educational and Gail, thank you so much for doing this series with us. My pleasure. This was great chatting with you. Thanks for listening to the, Oh, my health. There is hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, or listen there so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.